There's a common trend here. In front of me is a sugar maple, Acer saccharum. Behind it, another sugar maple, Acer saccharum. Surrounding us, there are also red maples, Acer rubrum, red maple, Acer rubrum. There are also some yellow birches in here. Actually, on the left, that's a yellow birch. On the right, that's a red maple. The interesting trend here is that in almost all cases in these woods, you will find that sugar maple, when growing with red maple and yellow birch, will be smaller diameter than the latter two. Red maple and yellow birch are both less shade tolerant than sugar maple and also faster growing. In other words, they are earlier succession. So these red maple stems are much larger in diameter than the sugar maple stem. Likely, these red maple stems came into this area before sugar maple, raced up along with yellow birch, which is also less shade tolerant than sugar maple, and together they formed a temporary canopy that sugar maple is now racing up to meet them in. Once sugar maple and American beech and red spruce race up, they will likely shade out the possibility of any more red maples and yellow birches from ever colonizing, at least until disturbance occurs. As we say disturbance, I realize the camera is focused on this uprooted, tipped over tree, which makes a great opportunity for something like yellow birch or red maple to move in again. Sugar maple is very capable of growing up through the shade of earlier successional species. It's part of why we find so many lower branches retained on these trees, because they can tolerate the shade that the collective canopy produces. Red maples will not retain any lower branches in a dense canopy. These low branches actually are coming from an adjacent sugar maple. Red maple has all of its foliage concentrated at the top because it will not tolerate the shade of this canopy.